President-elect Ruto is promising economic reforms and called for unity across the country. Thank my worthy competitor, the Honorable Rai Laudinga, for a campaign that we all dwelled on issues and we tried to sell an agenda to the people of Kenya. I want to promise that I will work with all elected leaders and all leaders in Kenya so that we can fashion a country that leaves nobody behind. I want to promise the people of Kenya that I will run a transparent, okay, open, everyone. Uh, the Prime Minister democratic will be government. Here in I want to commit to the people of Kenya that I will build on the foundation that President Kenyatta and I put together and take this country to the next level. I want to promise all the people of Kenya, whichever way they voted, that this will be their government. And let's bring in our eyes, East African correspondent Mark Bichachi, as he joins us to give us updates on the aftermath of election declaration in Kenya. I want to say thank you very much, Mark, for joining us today. And we just watched the speech of William Ruto speaking. I want to find out from you, first of all, the opposition. How is Raila Odinga taking this particular result? Well, we are yet to find out how Raila Odinga is taking the results simply because he is going to keep a statement in the next uh, few minutes. And that is what we are looking to, uh, to get updates. But my expectation is that he will file a petition. I think the margin of a win is quite slim and he would imagine that he can get it overturned, especially given the fact that he has a majority of uh, people within um, uh, uh, the IEBC who believe that the result is not genuine. So we expect that uh, Raila Odinga will uh, say that he's filing a petition today, uh, but I will update you on that once the, the Raila Odinga has given his statement. Now, Mark, we're hearing reports that four out of seven IEBC commissioners rejected the outcome of the election. What more can you tell us about this and what's the implication of this rejection for the Electoral Commission? Well, uh, it will be a matter of law that four out of uh, seven, um, which is a majority, rejected this election. It will be taken to court to see whether the certificate issued was illegally issued. Uh, it will be part of the petition. Now, will it have a material breach? breach? Well, lawyers differ. Some say that the quorum of IEBC is three uh, commissioners. Others say it is a majority of those who are present. So if it is three commissioners, uh, then we don't quite know how we are going to handle it. But it is still early days yet. Um, uh, it depends on what kind of petition is filed. And when it is actually filed, um, Reno Dinga has uh, six days uh, now left uh, from yesterday uh, to actually file a petition if he is going to do so. All right. And with all the election controversy aside, um, with William Ruto's win, is this the end of the political dynasties in Kenya and more of a shift towards a grassroots approach to the political season that they are currently in? That, that is an interesting question because the political dynasties were framed by William Ruto. So in that sense, then, yes, this would spell the end of the dynasties. But by no means of the imagination does it spell the end of politics as we know it in this country. A lot of the people who are with William Ruto are uh, career politicians. They are uh, descendants of politicians. So um, it, it, is, it is a symbol symbolic gesture, yes, uh, that the dynasties have fallen. That That is the symbolism here, yes. All right, Mark. Um, Marta Karu has actually tweeted, and I, let me quote her. She says, it is not over until it is over. This is after the results we actually read out. Talk to Ross. Is a perfect well, storm brewing? 
Well, what she's speaking about is that there is going to be a court case and Kenya famously annulled its elections in 2017. So what she's speaking about is a possible uh, court case with the annulment of the results uh, leading to a new election um, later on in the year. That is the only hope uh, that she can hold on to um, as, as a country, but is it going to happen? It's it's a 50-50 game right now. Um, I, I, I'm not sure it can, um, and even if it will, then um, will they be able uh, to, 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 to challenge a much more invigorated William Ruto crowd, uh, William Ruto support base uh, going into a second election? So it is, it is a tough hill to climb moving forward. In his victory speech, William Ruto promised to work with all leaders, saying there is no room for vengeance. He also praised President Kenyatta and promised to continue his legacy, even though we all know that the president did not actually support his unpresidential bid. But I'd like to know, how is this speech resonating with Kenyans, especially those who supported Mr. Odinga? Well, I, I, do, I, do, I don't even think those who supported Mr. Odinga listened to his speech. But of course, it, it gave a sense of calm, it gave a sense of hope uh, to, to a lot of us who listened to it because uh, Kenya does need reconciliation. 48.8% uh, versus 50.4 is a very slim um, a margin of votes, 200,000 votes out of 20 million possible votes is a small, slim margin. And therefore, um, it gave a sense of hope. Uh, indeed, that is the spirit that Kenya needs moving forward. Uh, and we hope that he lives to his word because Kenya is only stronger uh, when we are together. Uh, that is the hope that he will keep his word and, and, and that's really uh, what it is. Yeah. And in the lead up to the elections, we spoke quite a bit on here about the voter apathy, especially amongst the youth, 18 to 35, and how they more than likely were not going to show up to the polls because they weren't registered to vote. A lot of the videos that I saw from yesterday about the election violence, it kind of seemed like it was the youth who were taking up uh, arms or uh, ar hands to fight each other. Uh, there's a bit of a disconnect between those who did not participate in the electoral process yet want to make a statement about it. Any comments about that? Well, that's the interesting thing about Kenya, isn't it? That um, a lot of youth don't participate in voting, but they're very willing to participate in the in the in the chaos in the in any drama that unfolds. And and this is uh, what we even discussed on this very show. That uh, in fact, if those same youth who are complaining had showed up uh, to vote, uh, then Mr. Odinga would be uh, president elect today. Uh, so the youth did not show up to vote, but they are the first to complain. And and this is uh, typical of the Kenyan electoral system. Uh, the youth will complain, they will not vote, and the decision will be made uh, for them. All right, let's talk about um, those supporters out there in Kenya who came out to vote. Now, talk to us. how is life in Kenya, in Nairobi, and all the places there? One and two, we actually heard that there was a protest in some parts of Nairobi, to be very precise, in Kisumu. Talk to us about this. They say close to Odinga's hometown. Well, it, it is critical to understand that there are uh, two moods in this country. There is uh, jubilation uh, at the win of uh, William Ruto, and then there is depression on the, at the loss of Raila Odinga by another half of the country, whether they voted or not. And, and that uh, affected the areas in Kisumu and parts of Nairobi, uh, especially in the slums where Mr. Odinga has a lot of support. Now, uh, this then um, re re results in um, a 50-50 mood across the country where um, there's tension, people have not gone back to work fully yet, uh, people are waiting to see what Raila Odinga will say in a few minutes, and that is what will really determine the mood of this country moving forward. Well, like you said earlier, Mark, um, Raila Odinga is likely to approach the courts to overturn the election, but based on presidents, is he likely to succeed? That's the first part of my question. And if he doesn't, is this the end of his political career? 
Yes, he is likely to succeed. There's a big chance he could succeed. And and how, how, how we know this is the annulment of 2017 was indeed in his favor. And if that happens again, then we expect that uh, he will succeed in his court case and be able to create a runoff. The biggest question really for me is not the success of the court case. It is the the push really of, of, of making sure that he is able to win a rerun if that is even possible. And you are looking at the live, well, you were looking at the live photos of uh, Ralia Odinga's uh, soon to be speech. Uh, the crowd is waiting for him to address the nation. And Mark, what's the, what's the mood like in Kenya right now? Has the violence uh, completely subsided or are there still pockets of chaos? From what I've heard is that the violence has subsided. Uh, there is no chaos across the country. Uh, but uh, again, it depends really on what this speech says and, and what the leaders say. If the speech is reconciliatory, if Ray Lodinga uh, decides to go to court, then you expect tense days, but no violence is expected. Uh, and the police are on standby across the country, so we don't expect any violence. But the hearts of the Kenyan and people are on tenter hooks as they wait to see what Ray Lobdinger will say. All right, uh, we'll keep it tab. We'll be keeping tabs with you, uh, Mark Bichachi. Thank you for your time here on Newsday as we await Ray Lobdinger to make a speech to the nation of Kenya. Thank you very much.